What's being laid out is a a presentation of uh, the very Son of God, God Himself, being rejected by creation itself. This is how John deals with it at the beginning of his gospel. He presents it as Jesus, the agent of creation, stepping inside creation, and creation rejects him. That would be a bad enough place to stop, man. That's horrible. What a point of grief that the Lord of life would endure that. The problem, and I mean this with every bit of the seriousness I can say, that verses 32 through 44 is the easy part. It's the easy part. Verses 32 through 44 is the easy part because Christ at that point is being rejected by man. He's suffering in the body, but in what comes in verses 45 through 49 is far worse. Here, not rejected by man, but rejected by God Himself. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. We don't actually have description what this means, but we know in this geographical region, it's not the entire world, but in this geographical reason, for some reason, the Lord gives darkness for three hours. Just like Amos 8 says that it would. And on that day, declares the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight, just like he said he would. Three hours of darkness in the middle of day, this is noon to three o'clock, showing even the land itself, showing the Jews, showing the Romans that God was joining in in rejecting of Jesus. That God was joining in, turning his back on the Christ. That God was joining in. Separation from Christ Jesus. Verse 46, Jesus cries out, quoting Psalm 22. He's been meditating on it the entire time. It's amazing how many different verses are fulfilled here. This one is fulfilled in its speaking. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's what's happened. That's what's happened. 